Welcome to Santa Cruz in the heart of the Peruvian Amazon where we have come to look for every type of frog we can find. We've already found a lot of amazing frogs when we were at Madre Selva. If you haven't seen that video, it's right here. But now we've come to somewhere that's supposedly even better and it's been rainy. So I think it's gonna be raining frogs. Let's see what all we can find. This cute little frog is a common big-headed rain frog, and I do like them. I honestly feel like they're a little bit misnamed. Their head, it really isn't that big for their overall size. It's more that their body's really short. It should be the common short-bodied, normal-sized head rain frog, but we're gonna go with it for now. It's a pretty cool little frog. Got a slightly bumpy appearance, kind of like that of, uh, Maybe like Hyla versicolor, the, the gray tree frog. Very similar pattern to, a little bit lighter. They're kind of a little bit tan with some darker mottling to them. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, just kind of a normal looking frog, just with an extra short body making their head look extra big. There is a weird thing about them though, in addition to having that short body. This frog was also never a tadpole, at least not outside of the egg. And they lay their eggs in terrestrial locations. So they lay their eggs on land, and they develop all the way into frogs, called direct development, before they hatch. And they hatch out as tiny little, common, big-headed rain frogs. This little cutie is a painted forest toadlet. And as we talked about previously, these are not actually toads. These guys are called toadlets because they look like little baby toads. But they're not toads at all, they are frogs. And a lot of lumpy frogs get lumped in with the toads but the toads are actually a very distinctive group of often lumpy frogs. These guys though are really cool and one thing that I really like about them is when they're breeding, they breed in shallow water and they build a foam nest, so a big nest for their eggs. It's like foam bubbles. So you find this like kind of, looks like somebody's been, I don't know, doing, doing laundry or dishes or something there and made a big bunch of bubbles and then they lay their eggs in there. It's a cute little forest toadlet. This little cutie is a Bassler's sheep frog. And sheep frogs, we, we talked a little bit about these when we were looking at all the frogs we found at Madre Selva, though I don't think we ever found one of these while we were there. And they've got little eyes, narrow, narrow mouths, which actually, they're in a group that is commonly referred to as the narrow-mouthed toads or the sheep frogs. So you call them what you want to call them. But this is, this is a sheep frog, and, and they've got little eyes and these narrow little mouths and no obvious tympanic membrane. So the little circle eardrum that you normally can see on frogs, you can't see that on these little sheep frogs. These are cute little guys, though. They come out at night and they sit by a, a trail of ants walking by and they just eat up every ant they can until they are totally full. And something else that's pretty crazy about these sheep frogs is when they get scared, they defend themselves sort of like a stink bug, not by making a smell, but they stick their little bums in the air. And you can even see they've got a very, very distinctive color pattern on the bottom of their, their legs and on kind of the, the rear, like 60% of their underbelly. And so suddenly they flash that at things, and I guess that scares somebody, though I'm not sure how scary a less than one inch long, cute little narrow mouth frog could possibly be, but here we are. The Bassler sheep frog. This is another very rare frog. I was talking to Christoph, who, who is one of the guides here, and he says he hasn't seen one of these in four years. So this is a very, very rare, but also very big toad. This is a giant smooth-sided toad. You can hear its cute little call. These guys, even when they are doing their breeding call, this is more of a, a distress call, but when they're doing their breeding call, even then, it's a very quiet call. It's easy to miss, even if you're right by them when you encounter them. They have an absolutely gorgeous, kind of understated coloration, a really pretty brown back with some kind of light red bumps. Being a smooth-sided toad, the bumps are pretty small. It's got a, a, a kind of a yellow, line down the side that goes up over the parotid glands and kind of down the ridge to the eye. And then everything below that is much, much darker. 
except for these pretty little kind of cream colored spots that it has on its belly. A very, very pretty toad. These guys can lay thousands of eggs at a time. So even though they're very rare, when they do get together, they're quite fecund. And uh, I'm being a little bit careful with this toad. They, their parotid glands are here on the side. They're big, sort of like those of the cane toad. And apparently they can shoot their poison, almost like a spitting cobra, hopefully not with the precision of a spitting cobra, but they can shoot their poison out of those parotid glands. And uh, I don't want that, especially in my mouth or eyes, anywhere near my face. So I'm kind of watching where I aim him, but uh, this is a really adorable, really special toad. I really, really like him and definitely an amazing find. Giant smooth-sided toad. This is a young crested forest toad, which is one of the coolest looking toads I've ever seen in my life. They've got these hard crests up on their head and then ridges that run down their side, almost like a, a bearded dragon where they've got the little row of, of spikes down the side. They're, they're overall a very unusual little toad and they're, they're part of a species complex. So there's probably a whole lot of different species of these, but most of them that we've seen have been something like this. However, last night something amazing happened. We found this crested forest toad, which is the coolest looking and the craziest looking toad I have ever seen. I've never seen a crazier looking frog of any kind than this crested forest toad. It is insane. Of course, I do have to mention, we do have another one on this list that we found last night that rivals this for crazy if we're talking all frogs. But those are probably the two craziest looking frogs I have ever encountered in my life. And my gosh, the longer I look at him, the more crazy I find. Uh, let's start with his Dilophosaurus crests. They're enormous. They stand vertical and they too are hard, just like with the other crested forest toads. He's also got two little bony projections down here at the edges of his mouth. His modeling is crazy and beautiful and he's got this cool black cutoff between sort of a light brown and a dark brown. Cuts right through his crest and over across his nose and he's peed on me because he's a proper toad. And that's what toads are contractually obligated to do is they always pee on you when you hold them. Then on his back, it gets arguably crazier. He's still got those spikes on the side. Of course, they're bigger because he's bigger and crazier looking in general. But then he's got something I have never seen on a toad before. He's got a row of spines down his vertebra. He's, it looks like six of them, six big spikes sticking out there and a number of other spikes on his sides. He's bonkers looking. He's just a bonkers looking toad. I've never been more excited about a toad in my life. This toad is nuts. Crested Forest Toad. This might be the most exciting animal of all of them that we found on this entire trip. This little creature that looks like Dobby the house elf is actually a long-nosed cask-headed tree frog. These frogs are weird. And they're weird, not just in the way that they look, I'll get to that, but they're also really weird in the things that they do. These guys have a really, really strange breeding and, well, developmental process. There is no evidence that they call. So we don't know that these frogs do any sort of a call. They may look for each other in some other way. And on top of that, when they do breed, the female carries the eggs, up to about 20 eggs, on her back while they develop. And they develop for somewhere between like 40 and 60 days. We don't know because there's so little that's known about these frogs. They're very rarely seen. What we do know is that they develop all the way into froglets inside of the egg. This is called direct development. It's fairly uncommon for amphibians. Most amphibians hatch out of the egg as tadpoles or some other swimming type larva and then they metamorphose into the frogs. This all happens within the egg for the cask-headed frogs. When they hatch, they are tiny little cask-headed frogs. Now let's get to how weird this frog looks. It almost looks like an owl. It looks like a frog in an owl costume uh, with a few extra weird features. 
It's got this long kind of beak-like nose projection off the front. It's got these crazy ears, which are hard, though there is a soft little point at the end of them. The rest of that ear is all very hard. It's a hard ear. They've got spikes off the back of their heels. They've got spikes off their knees and actually all down their legs. They've got those on their front legs as well. They've got a row of spikes on their, on their spine that you can see. And I think I've heard, yeah, those are, those are hard. I think those are vertebral projections. This is a thoroughly weird frog, and that's just the top side. If we, if we get lucky, we might even see the threat display, though I'm trying not to threaten this frog too much. I want to see what the bottom looks like, because they're so bizarre. The bottom is not as exceptional as the top. It looks kind of like a normal frog bottom, except for on their chin. On their chin, it's got a few more little white spikes down there. This is such a bizarre frog, and when they get startled, they have a threat display. They open their mouth. I saw it earlier today, and that mouth is bright yellow. So they pop that mouth open and expose a bright yellow inner mouth. It, uh, it kind of reminds me of what you see with some geckos. What a thoroughly bizarre and truly amazing tree frog. Probably the most exciting thing we've found so far, and maybe the most exciting thing we can find here at Santa Cruz, maybe here in the Peruvian Amazon, the long-nosed, cask-headed tree frog. Look at this cute little guy. I know he looks like a normal-sized toad, so it's a little absurd that I'm calling him a cute little guy, except this is a cane toad. And if you saw our video of all the frogs we caught at Madre Selva, then you will know that this is a dinky little cane toad and that they get way bigger than this. And I have really fallen in love with cane toads. I adore them. At this size, just a normal toad, but there's something special about that giant monster super toad. And they have a bad reputation because they have become a horrible invasive species in so many places. But finding them here in their native habitat, there's nothing to do but love them. The cane toad. This little guy is a convict tree frog, which at first glance, actually looks quite a bit like a leaf. These little tarsal spurs that they have at the back on their heels give them a very pointed shape at the back, but they look just sort of like a tan blob with a line on them. It isn't until you see them extend out their legs that you see even why they're called convict. They're called convict because they have these white or blue and black bars all down their sides and down their legs, but those are only exposed when the legs are open, when they're closed. Just a cute brown little blob, convict tree frog. This little cutie is actually one of the coolest frogs I've seen since I've been here. This is a juvenile map tree frog, and I've uh, never seen something quite like it, to be perfectly honest. Its pattern is really striking. Its basic body shape is really reminiscent of a red-eyed tree frog. They've got ginormous eyeballs, and uh, kind of a, a, a body that's a little bit skinnier than their big heads. They do have some things that are majorly different though. Uh, one of them is that their front fingers are webbed about halfway down. And, and their, back, their back legs are, are webbed similarly to a red-eyed tree frog, but those front fingers have some webbing, almost like a, a flying tree frog. Their pattern is nothing like that of a red-eyed tree frog though. This guy, and they can be somewhat variable, but this guy, he's got like a tan with black spots pattern. His legs are brown with very faint barring, but his feet, they really are the thing that got me the most excited. The webbing on those and his toes are black. That's true for the front and the back and inside of the legs and thighs and down the sides. This is a really, really striking frog. His eyes actually are very similarly colored to the rest of his body, very unlike that of the red-eyed tree frog. But this is just a really neat looking frog. I am a big fan of this. Map tree frog. Earlier, we got a look at a juvenile map tree frog. Well, now we have an adult map tree frog, and it is, it looks different. That was a pretty good shot. Thanks for not shooting at me. You turned around before you did that. That is respectful. That's what that is. This is an adult map tree frog, and it looks different but I can't tell you which one I think is more beautiful. I've honestly just fallen in love with these frogs. In a lot of ways, they're shaped a lot like a red-eyed tree frog. So they've got a little bit of a projection coming off of their heels. 
and, and this is one of the things I love about them, their front feet are almost completely webbed. Not totally, but like maybe three quarters of the way webbed all the way to the toe pads. That's right. They've got an overall just sort of kind of a yellow brown appearance, but they're definitely banded. It, it alternates, and, and so they look kind of like maybe an old pirate's treasure map. And that's where they get the name Map Tree Frog. On their belly, whoo, you got a lot of bright colors. You got striping inside the legs on the side. You've got absolutely like leopard print, which is just craziness. This is such a beautiful frog, such an absolutely beautiful frog. I didn't know they existed and now I'm in love. That leopard print, I can't get over that. It is just leopard print in there. What a high fashion frog, map tree frog. Thanks for not peeing on me. This springy little guy is a rocket tree frog and he just let out a pretty good which they sometimes do when they're distressed. Hopefully you've got to hear that pretty well. This is a crazy little guy and they are fast. If you saw our video at Madre Selva, you'll know we've caught these guys before, but uh, they are the hardest of all the frogs that we've gotten to hang on to. <laughs> they're constantly trying to shoot out of here. Fortunately, this isn't my first rodeo. You don't know what you're up against, you little rocket tree frog. Cute though, rocket tree frog. Right here is a tiny froglet of a frog I absolutely fell in love with at Madre Selva when I saw the only other one I've ever seen. And that is the common, maybe not so common, polka dot tree frog. This is just a little baby and it is so beautiful and cute and translucent. Almost like the glass tree frogs at this age you can see right through the guy. I, I wanted you guys to get to see him and uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you a little bit of what they look like as adults. Maybe I'll find an adult here and I'll, I'll bring you up to date on that, but you had to see this guy now. I love these frogs. I don't know if you guys know this, but I love clown tree frogs. Oh, hey buddy. And these little cuties are variable clown tree frogs. I, lo I love clown tree frogs, they're so adorable. Clown tree frogs, and I, I've only noticed this since I've been looking at them a little bit more. Across clown tree frogs, one of the big things that you see is red on their legs and red webbing between their toes. Oh. And they tend to have a lot of oranges and maroons and creams or whites in their coloration. And these variable clown tree frogs, other than that same basic color scheme, their patterns can vary dramatically. This one has sort of the classic <laughs> clown tree frog pattern to him, but others have a pattern more like a giraffe. Some very spotted. They are just so unusual in their coloration. And I would like to understand more about the genetics of this. It'd be amazing if you could get a big breeding project together and we could figure out how, how heritable these different colorations are. My guess is they're probably controlled by many, many genes. And that's why you get so much polymorphism in these frogs. But they're so cute, so beautiful, and so diverse, even within just one species. I love these guys. Oh my goodness. The variable clown tree frog. This little beauty is a forest bromeliad tree frog. And the reality is we've got a lot of different bromeliad tree frogs since we've been here. And this one is without question my favorite one. The bromeliad tree frogs are, are part of the genus Osteocephalus, which has to do with the fact that the skin of their head is fused to their skull, and they're all very cute little frogs. This guy is a totally different color. He is so mossy in his appearance. Oh, he's so beautiful. And he's got these bright, striking yellow eyes. I love this frog. This guy is amazing. There's no way you'd confuse it with any of the other bromeliad tree frogs. And these guys are sufficiently rare that there's an awful lot about them that we just simply don't know. Many of the bromeliad tree frogs, unsurprisingly, reproduce in bromeliads, which are an epiphyte. It's a, it's a plant that lives up in the trees and they've got little cups for water because they can't have roots into the ground. And these guys, many of this group at least, reproduce and lay their eggs in those cups. Do these guys do that? We don't know. Many of the bromeliad tree frogs have paired vocal sacs. So when they call, 
two sacks inflate instead of one like with most frogs. Is that the case with these guys? We don't know. We don't know what their call sounds like. There's so much to learn about these amazing frogs, but I am so thankful that I get to have these moments with this beautiful little forest bromeliad tree frog. This is a flat-headed bromeliad tree frog, which is a very, very cool frog indeed. Like other bromeliad tree frogs, its skull is fused to the skin on its head, or vice versa, the skin on its head is fused to its skull, giving them the genus name Osteocephalus. And these guys are actually really difficult to tell apart from some of the other bromeliad tree frogs. The main way that you can tell is by looking at their eyes and exactly how long their hind legs are. Kind of difficult, but these eyes are spectacular. The eyes of bromeliad tree frogs in general are the giveaway that that's what you have, and these eyes are extra special. Flat-headed bromeliad tree frog. Hey, I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon for sending us here. This has been an absolute dream come true. I can't believe what we have seen since we've been here, and I'm so thankful. It's because of you guys that we get to share this content with everyone. So thank you for making this possible. And if you would like to join our patrons in supporting efforts like this, or if you'd just like to see the cool, amazing features we have for our patrons at Patreon, please consider checking it out. If you would be to take, say, a gray tree frog from North America and breed it with a duck, I think what you would get is this, the fringe lip tree frog. That is genuinely what it looks like, and interestingly enough, what it sounds like. Because not only do they have this spectacular duckbill face, but their breeding call is a single, long, wah, magnificent. This is the fringe-lipped tree frog, and it is a really special little frog. It's got a very kind of drab, uh, bark-like back to it. You know, it's, it's got some small little tubercles on it, little bits of green, almost like moss peeking through here and there. And, and when the frog is all closed up, it just kind of looks like the bark of a tree. But when it opens its legs, you can see, as is the case with a lot of the frogs around here, some bright orange and black barring inside of those legs. And that's actually very distinctive and diagnostic of these frogs if the silly duckbill wasn't enough. But believe me, the silly duckbill is enough. This is one interesting looking frog, but obviously not even the weirdest looking frog we have found since we've been here. This place is full of weird and amazing frogs, but this is definitely a good one. The fringe lip tree frog. This little cutie is a two-striped tree frog, which in a lot of ways is sort of like your most classic tree frog. It's got horizontal slit eyeballs, as is the case for most tree frogs. Very few have the vertical slits. It's got toe pads. They're, uh, they're serious toe pads. It's got unwebbed front feet and webbed back feet. It's gray. It's a pretty typical tree frog. It does have two white stripes, but one really cool thing that sets these guys apart is when they jump or when they expose their legs, they expose a really bright yellow little patch on the inside of their thigh and on their side. It's totally concealed when their legs are forward, but when the legs are back, they suddenly become bright. Surprise, surprise. Very cute little frog. This little cutie is a spotted hatchet-faced tree frog, and they are some adorable little frogs. They've got one of the cutest faces I've ever seen on a frog, which is saying a lot because frogs are basically the definition of cute faces except we've seen some pretty crazy looking toads and frogs since we've been here. But generally speaking, they're cute. And uh, this one's ultra cute. They're just little green frogs. They're very translucent. I can actually see his vertebrae right through his back. You can see his organs through his belly. Pretty crazy. Now these are the medium sized hatchet faced tree frogs that you'll find around here. There are three different species, one slightly bigger, one slightly smaller, this one the most medium sized. And it also has little folds on either side of its vent. That's another feature that you use to identify these guys. But uh, a very cool little frog. These guys eat ants, which I think is one of the most excellent things a little frog could eat in this jungle because the ants, they're all over the place and they, I mean, sometimes you'll see them, they, they travel in little, little tr streams, right? Sometimes only like one ant thick, 
but sometimes just a flood of ants. We've seen incredible numbers of ants. And if you can find one of those narrow little trickles of ants, you could just stand right by it and eat until you don't want any more and be on your merry way. Seems pretty good to me. These guys though, they actually live in our pond and so we get to hear them sing at night like crazy. Cute little guy, spotted hatchet face tree frog. This little cutie is a white-lined monkey frog. And we did find these, actually quite a few of them at Madre Selva. And last night we found a few more here at Santa Cruz. This one though is very awake even during the day. Usually during the day it is so hard to get them to even open their eyeballs. I am so excited to see him. And this is, by the way, sort of how they move. They're capable of jumping, but most of the time they're very slow and deliberate. They sort of walk around like red-eyed tree frogs will do. And he just, oh, he's just so perfect. These monkey frogs, there are quite a few species around here. We're hoping to find a giant monkey frog so I can show you one of those. So they are capable of jumping. Whoop, told you they could jump. They lay their eggs on leaves, but over bodies of water, probably small bodies of water. So tadpoles can fall down into the water and they're just such cute, such pleasant little frogs. White line monkey frog. Since we've been here in the Amazon, we have seen quite a few monkey frogs. To this point, they have all been the white lined monkey frog, and every one is really exciting because monkey frogs are cool. But this is, without any question, in my opinion, the ultimate monkey frog. This is the giant monkey frog, and it can be deciphered from the white line monkey frog by its lack of the white lines down the side and of course by the fact that it is absolutely colossal. This is a huge tree frog. In addition to just being huge, they're also pretty bizarre in, in other ways. They've got uh, parotid glands, which are their poison secreting glands behind their eyes, but they don't just go here like you'd maybe see on a toad. They extend all the way down their back. It's crazy, they're just colossal, and it's my understanding that the secretions that they produce are pretty nasty, so you wanna wash your hands before eating anything, you don't wanna to touch your eyes or anything like that after handling one of these. It sure gives them a big, clumpy, amazing look though. And something else I noticed that's really cool is a lot of frogs don't have webbing on their front hands, though some do, and we've seen a few. Most frogs have webbed back legs though, these guys do not. And that said, they do spend time over water. I don't know how great they are as swimmers. I imagine they can swim, but they're not really built for swimming like a lot of frogs. But they do nest over water. They, they actually lay their eggs on leaves and things overhanging water, and then the tadpoles drop into the pond below. And so that's kind of the best place to find them, is on branches and things overhanging water like a pond. Uh, but these guys, I mean, they're just absolutely stupendous. They're more walkers than they are hoppers. They can hop, but they usually kind of carefully move around. And they're called waxy frogs because in many places where it gets a little bit dry, they produce a waxy substance that they smear all over their bodies to keep themselves from drying out, from desiccating. So this is a totally bodacious frog, one that I am so excited that we got to see. I was afraid we wouldn't see one because we're coming near the end of our trip. There it is, the giant waxy monkey frog. Oh, one last cool thing about them because I've talked about this a lot. Most tree frogs and frogs in general that are nocturnal have horizontal slit pupils. This is one of those few that has vertical slit pupils, so check those out as well. Ah, can't get over you, You're too cool. This tiny little dude is a long-nosed rain frog. And he does have a conspicuously long nose for such a tiny little frog. It's also uh, of note that you can't really see his tympanic membrane. His, his eardrum is not really apparent like it is on most frogs. And even though he's very cryptically colored for the most part, though he looks quite striking at the moment, he's got a little yellow dot right on his hip, right above his back leg. Other than that, he's a pretty nondescript frog. He does have unwebbed toes, front and back, which is kind of cool. And like most rain frogs, these guys actually reproduce on land. They lay their nests, or they, they lay their eggs on land, and the 
eggs develop directly into little froglets, direct development, then they hatch out and hop away as even tinier, tiny little long-nosed rain frogs. What a cute little morsel. This cute little guy is a Peruvian rain frog. And these are actually pretty weird little frogs. Rain frogs are found sort of all over the Americas, even in the Caribbean islands up into uh, the United States. They're found all over the place and they're usually very small like this guy. You can tell these apart from other rain frogs because they've got these little ridges on their back and an all white belly, which kind of sets them apart from the other rain frogs. But a crazy thing about rain frogs is that rain frogs lay their eggs on land, okay? And then the eggs develop all the way into froglets before they hatch. So these guys spend no period of their lives as tadpoles. They come out of the egg as fully developed little frogs on land. That's pretty wild. You don't see that. You don't see that with frogs very often at all. The crazy Peruvian rain frog. This little frog looks to be a spotted thighed poison dart frog. But as I look closer, it doesn't have the really dark eyes of most dart frogs. As I look a little closer still, it does have spots on its thighs, really pretty ones, but they're not yellow. They're bright orange. And if you see this move, doesn't jump like a poison dart frog, jumps like most other frogs. This is not a poison dart frog at all, it's a mimic. This is an ant nest frog. And these guys tend to hang out on ant nests. In fact, probably one of the most likely places that you'll find one is up on top of a leaf cutter ant nest, which we have a whole video about leaf cutter ants. And these guys are really, really cool. They seem to have some sort of a a relatively peaceful relationship with the ants. I'm really not sure if they eat ants or not. They definitely eat other insects that are nearby and the ants don't seem to attack them, which seems like a reasonable thing to do if they're eating you. It may be that they just don't eat enough ants to be a real problem for the colony, but it might also be that they do something to benefit the ants. If you know the answer to that, I would like to know a little bit more about these very cool frogs, but they sure are gorgeous. Really, really pretty frogs. Mimics a poison dart frogs, which has a benefit because predators are selected upon to avoid such frogs, but not themselves poison dart frogs at all. The ant nest frog. When I saw the movie E.T. as a kid, I became horrified by the possibility that someday I was gonna have to dissect a frog, especially a live frog. I love frogs, I could never do that to a frog. But sometimes it would be really interesting to see what's going on inside of a frog while it's alive. If only there was a frog that was transparent so you could see its organs functioning without doing it any harm. Like, I don't know, a glass frog? This little guy is a glass frog and he is so beautiful and cute. His head is really quite something to behold. He's got this really light green tie it with very, very fine little dapples all over it. And that's just sort of what he looks like from above. But that's not the part about him that's most exceptional. This frog hides no secrets. Can you see where it is? <laughs> hey, buddy. For its belly is totally translucent. This one even appears to have some eggs inside of it that it's gearing up to lay in the near future and you can see some blood supply to what is probably its liver. You can see its little heart beating in there. That's quite a crazy visual inside of a little glass frog. Here's something. A little springy. This little guy here is a laughing bromeliad tree frog and he is very very springy indeed. These are really hard to catch. They tend to hang out in the trees and whenever anything comes by, they zip up to the surface. As you can see, this is a very cool little frog. They're called laughing bromeliad tree frogs because, well, for one thing, they spend a lot of time around bromeliads, which are a plant that lives way up in trees. They provide little cups of water where some species of bromeliad tree frogs actually lay their eggs. And these guys are laughing because their call, as is the case with many bromeliad tree frogs, is very much like a laughing human. You can identify them most easily. They're kind of a brown. Like I said, they're difficult to catch. They often will flee 
up into trees very, very quickly when disturbed. But they're kind of a brown frog with a bit of a mask, nothing particularly special. They've got toe pads, as do many tree frogs. We've got, whoa! Well, I almost got a mouthful of frog. <laughs> They've got horizontal pupils, as do most tree frogs. But one thing about them that is very unique, and actually, this is the bromeliad tree frog I know the least about, but many of the bromeliad tree frogs have double throat pouches when they call instead of just one like you find with most frogs. So they're pretty unique and they make that laughing sound when they do call. One of the things we look for when we're trying to decide if it's one of these guys though is their really, really striking eye pattern. It's really quite something to behold. The laughing bromeliad tree frog. This is an extremely rare frog. This is a ground-dwelling cask-headed tree frog. And you heard me right, a ground-dwelling tree frog. So the entire rest of the cask-headed tree frog group are very unusual frogs. And you don't find any of them very often. Most of them live way, way, way high in the canopy. But we were very blessed to have seen one already. That almost never happens. This frog virtually never appears. In fact, it is so rare that even in my field guide, there are no pictures of this frog. They never found one. But this is one, and... It's odd. It's odd. It is a member of that group, but its, it's toe pads are very, very tiny. Uh, really hardly noticeable as being toe pads. And that's because they spend almost all of their time on the ground. Like other cascaded frogs, these guys hunt frogs and insects. But you can see this head on this guy is ginormous. This guy can hunt some bigger frogs than his arboreal cousins. And he is really weird looking. Very cool. He's got some little spikes over his eyes, sort of like a Pac-Man frog, but then his skull has a really unusual shape. I don't know, it's almost like, it's like a big V of sorts, or I don't know what, how you'd describe that shape exactly. He's got little projections down around the edge of his, of his uh, mouth. Overall, he looks a lot like a leaf, but he's, his head is just disproportionately colossal, even for a frog. His back is unusual, the way it kind of caves in there, and he's got these amazing stripes and spots on the inside of his legs and on his lips. He is just a wild looking frog with black eye shadow. Gorgeous and super bizarre, and their behavior is bizarre too. Like other cascaded frogs, these guys carry their eggs around. So the female will lay eggs and then carry them around on her back until they hatch, and they don't hatch at the same time as many other frogs. These guys don't hatch into tadpoles. There is no tadpole stage. They've got direct development. A tiny version of this little guy pops out of the egg, hops off of mom's back, and goes off to be a weird and very, very rare frog. This is the ground-dwelling cascaded tree frog, and I'm so thankful we got to see it. If you like really cute frogs, and seeing into their bellies. But you want something a little bit bigger than the glass tree frog? Well, there's always this guy, the nymph tree frog. This guy has got really striking eyes. I'd say that is one of the most extraordinary features on it. Frogs always have striking eyes, but these are bright and bordered in thick black, which really just makes them pop extraordinarily. They also have one really interesting feature I've never really seen on a frog before, which is they've got a red patch on essentially like their pinky fingernail is bright red and all their other toes basically kind of a, a white body color sort of a, a color. There's a really clear distinction between the point where there's pigment on the dorsal surface of this frog and everything down below which is transparent. And I can see right through the side of this frog, she's got some eggs just like our glass tree frog did. And probably a lot more secrets to reveal down below. Oh yes, yeah, you can see it all. Not quite as clear as is the case with the little glass tree frog, but a lot of that is just due to being small and having subsequently thinner skin. You can see a heck of a lot of organs through here though. There is a lot going on in this little cutie, but man, it's adorable all the time. Those eyes, I just can't get past those eyes. Those just are screaming my name. Well, I like this little painted fingernailed, eyelinered nymph tree frog with the see-through belly.
Well, I think this little beauty is the perfect frog to end on in this adventure here in Santa Cruz. We have found some amazing amphibians since we've been here. If you haven't already seen them, be sure to check out all of the incredible frogs that we saw earlier at Madre Selva. And as always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. This pretty cool looking frog. Woo! Calm down, buddy. I'll be right back. Maybe. I'm back. Fun little guy. Very bouncy. Look at that, it's tympanum is on the back. It's on the back of its head. Oh my goodness, what a creature. You did that with your eyes closed. You're daring. A termite queen just flew down my shirt. Woo, good jump. And, and this is one of the things I love about them. Where are you going? Rocket tree frog. Woo, what the heck? He's got a spike. What? I gotta figure out where that is. Let's see, somewhere on his front hands, he has a spike that he was using to claw me. Most frogs don't have something like that. I'm trying to figure out where this thing is. That was interesting. That was a new approach. Hopping away doesn't work. I'll claw ya. Oh, I think I found it. There it is. Right on the inside of his thumb there. Oh, I see it. Okay, hold on. That's a little spike. And he uses that to claw you. He's got a little defensive claw. They had tree frogs. Whoop. Be right back. An awful lot. Sorry. Hey, buddy. You got more of that in mind? 